This is Justin McAfee with Collapse Curriculum. Now, I was <laughs> my first time doing this. I was streaming without any sound. Uh, so, I am back on here. Hopefully, you can hear me. And um, we're talking about Denmark today. Denmark, uh, I actually put out a, uh, a question on Twitter asking if you'd like to, to see how civilization has wrecked the area that you live in or an area you're curious about. And I have had requests for Denmark, uh, for Florida, New England, and Guatemala. So we're starting with Denmark out of just a random choice. And I'm going to um, use some, uh, some satellite images and some information that I've picked up from uh, European Union and Denmark uh, governmental institutions. And the first thing that, uh, you know, I just wanted to obviously point out that this is the area uh, known as Denmark in the color here. Uh, it's north of Germany and uh, includes this island over here. So we'll be looking at this peninsula and these islands here and just taking a look at what the status is. Okay, let's see. Make sure we're pointing north here. All right, so here's Northern Europe. There's Denmark right there. And let's just take a look real quick here with the satellite image. As you can see immediately as we zoom in, most of Denmark is agricultural land. And if we zoom in close, you'll see what it looks like. Um, it's all segmented into property parcels. This is my property. This is yours. And uh, this could be also, you know, different fields, uh, different kinds of plants, and then fallow fields, some that aren't being used at the moment or whatever, right? But as we can see, um, most of this is monocrops. And a lot of people think when they drive out into the so-called country that it is um, nature because they're, you know, comparing it to Copenhagen, which is urban environment. Now, I think the urban environment is between eight and nine percent in uh, Denmark of the land, the whole land area, and then um, something like seventy-six percent of Denmark is considered agricultural land. And so, both of those things are clearly civilization, right? It has replaced the natural world. This is not the natural world. This is a monocrop that they plant and harvest and they use to feed humans. It, you know, there isn't biodiversity here. I mean, there might be some insects, some birds, and even some mammals that still utilize the area, uh, groundhogs or whatever, although they try probably do the best to kill off all of those things when they're trying to grow their food so it doesn't get destroyed, right? That's why you have scarecrows and things like that to keep the animals away. Um, hard to keep them all away, but this is not nature. This is industrial civilization or civilization in general. Because civilization is marked by agriculture. That's how it started. And that's what enables places like Copenhagen to exist. It's because... These people aren't, this is dense populations of people. They're not, for the most part, growing food here. They can't live off of the place that they actually live, where they reside. They can't live off of this land. This person in this apartment here, or condo, or whatever it is, cannot live off of this land because there's just not enough of it. And they need, obviously, to park their cars and build their trains and all that kind of stuff. So, for the most part. And so they have to do it out here. And, okay, so there's a couple of websites you can check out. This is the Ministry of Environment of Denmark. This talks about forestry. There is this website that talks about biodiversity in Europe, and it kind of breaks down. This is, you know, how much of Denmark is considered protected. And while I will say that um, they've done some work to prevent certain activities happening in land areas in Denmark, um, 
to call the call, to call these protected areas is sort of you know it you have to understand the definition it does not mean that these are wild areas it just means that they prevent certain kinds of um, activities happening there like um, maybe mining or other commercial purposes but it doesn't mean that the the protected areas are representative habitats uh, at some at one point before agriculture uh, before civilization um, Denmark was mostly forest and according to this um, it is now 14 percent uh, hectares of yeah, 640,000 hectares of land in Denmark, uh, which is 14.9% of the land area. Okay. Now, according to this, uh, about, a, looks like about a fifth of it or so uh, is state owned. So the, the rest is privately owned. You know, privately owned doesn't mean they can do anything they want. They can't, there are certain laws about how they have to handle it, especially if it's protected, right? But it could still be privately privately owned, protected, quote unquote. And if we go down here, um, this website, this government website does say that Denmark was originally covered by forest. But after centuries of uncontrolled felling and clearance for agriculture, just two to 3% of Denmark was covered by forest around 1800. Now, so since that time, they planted trees. There was some laws passed that prevented the clearance of forests. You know, but the damage had already been done. The soil composition has completely changed in Denmark. So we can plant some trees, but is that a is that an ecosystem? So let's delve into that a little bit more here. Let's take a look at some of the forests. Now it says most of the forests are in this area here in this peninsula. I want to say it is, I can't remember what the name of it is, uh, Yarrow or something like that. Anyway, this is, let's see, let's take a look at some of these forests. You can see that almost all of it is agriculture land, right? So 14% of it is considered forest. But what does that mean? Here's a forest. These are trees, right? It's weird that these, they're like in little rows, like a grid. That's the forest. Take a look at some other ones here. Same thing here, right? So it looks like they're all the same trees and they're planted in little squares, you see? Like a monocrop. So in a way, and like, for example, in the United States, the Department of Agriculture is above, that's what the US Forest Service is under. So even in the United States, forestry is considered agriculture. And that's exactly what this is. So you might be driving down this road and think, wow, look at all those trees. Look at this forest. It's beautiful. They even have looks like different kinds of trees on the, on the edge of the roads. I don't know if that's intentional or not, but it doesn't almost look like they're trying to make it look more diverse here. And then once you get past that, it's like monocrop. And you can see it based on this um, website here. It tells you what are some of the protected areas in Denmark. And a lot of this is water or along the water. Let's see here. You can see just through there that okay this is a protected area but you can see it's clearly 
been segmented. You know, you got this thing reaching in here. And you can see through the transparency here that that is all protected. It's not like it's one forest or something, right? Let's see if we can find that on the satellite. Yeah, right here. That's what we were looking at. So some of this is protected areas. But look at this. You know, you got urban areas, urban sprawl. And then you have these little forests here that are, what do you call this? And that's basically how everything in Denmark looks. I would say, even though they call it forests, that maybe on some of the coastlines, I mean, look at this. This is the same. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure this is pretty far out into the countryside, away from big cities, but it's developed. It probably feels like the country you're driving around. Go down to the coast, sit on the beach, take a picture of the lighthouse. And here, look, here's a picture. Let's look. Oh, that looks beautiful. And I'm sure it is. Not knocking it. And so you can see from these pictures here, it is beautiful. But these trees, this is a farm. And there's trees, but they're not really forests, even though they call them that. These are headlands and a you know, beach. Beautiful, but it's not nature. Not most of it anyways. It's fun to look at the pictures compared to the satellite because the picture gives you what you look like, what it looks like, like on the ground as, as a human. And this feels like nature when you're there, but then you look at the reality of it. And you see this. Let's see, take a look at some other places here. Just so you, to get, for a comparison, okay? Let's look at the, the Amazon. So this is the Amazon. Zoom in a little bit closer here which a lot of the Amazon is still pretty well intact. It's a huge area. So this is what a forest would look like in its natural state. This is nature. Um, but let's take a look at what's happening here. Sorry, I was looking at social media. <laughs> Seem to forget any comments. Uh, feel free to, if you're on Twitter or Facebook or YouTube, to uh, drop a comment or a question. We'd be happy to look at it. All right. So... If we look at the edge of the Amazon, this is where you see what's happening, what happened in Denmark is happening to the Amazon. You can see that this is where farming and land use is just encroaching into the Amazon. And if you look at time lapses of this, it's incredible how much, like this 20 years ago or 40 years ago was not here. This was all natural land and you can just see if we bet we zoom out a little bit so was all of this this has all happened recently and you can see it here going through all right so one thing to consider when we're looking at all of this okay is that denmark for example uh uses more wood than it produces so it's a the forests that are in Denmark are being used like a crop and they harvest the wood. So it's not old growth. So it's not really a real forest. 
But B, they don't even produce enough wood for their own use. So what they do is they outsource that damage somewhere else around the world where the forests are disappearing that exist. So we don't get to see that damage in Denmark because it's happening in the Amazon or somewhere else. All right. And, and it's not, I'm not picking on Denmark here. This is every industrial society is doing this. You know, Japan's doing this. The United States is doing this. England. And if we looked at a lot of those other countries, we would see a similar state of land use. And people don't want to believe it. I've had people on Twitter tell me, how can there not be, how can animals be running out of places to live? I mean, animals, there. I, I, if you ever drive across this country, you will see that it is all, there's so much nature. Well, in the United States, it's a huge land area and there certainly is more, uh, there's more space for animals. But if you look and all of these places here, this is uh, Alabama. You can see what's happening here, too. This is all agricultural land. There's some forest, same situation. There might be more land mass that has forest, but you'll see that there, it's patchy. There's roads. It's patchy because it's being harvested. And, of course, it's being developed, too. You can see here. And that's true everywhere in the United States. So that's what's happening to the whole planet. And Denmark, this is what the, I mean, the end result is really. Um, and it's interesting because if, like I said, if you go out to these forests, I don't know if there's any pictures that we can see. Sometimes you go out to these places and it feels like nature. These guys are fishing here, probably camping. You know, you got the forest back there. You got this lake. All right, let's take a look at where they are here. Oh, there's a bunch of pictures. But anyway, you can see that's right here. I mean, yeah, okay. There's a pond. A place to fish there's some trees but for scale look at this this is a building and this is what it looks like when you zoom out a little bit so yeah you might drive down this road and think look at all those trees look at all this nature but when you really look closely and just analyze what you're looking at you realize this isn't really nature guys it's certainly not representative habitat. I mean, it's plants. But. All right, let's take a look. Let me get rid of these. Oh, let's keep them here. Okay, so this little island out here, this is part of Denmark. Let's take a look. Maybe it's better. Same thing. I think I saw, I was looking at this earlier. I saw a campground and the campground, yeah, here, here. This is the camping ground. See, there's some people with RVs. It's kind of like a KOA camp, you know? It's like, here's a square of trees and some picnic tables and some fire pits. And, you know, if you live in a city, it probably feels pretty legit. I'm trying to think of why that. What picture are we looking at right here? This is what it looks like, though, in reality, from the sky. It's just... Yeah, it's, there's less concrete and steel. There's more trees and grass. But the question is, where do the animals live here? Where do the animals live in Denmark? So just to give you a little bit of information, uh, I believe 
uh, let's see, I've read that 350 or so species have gone extinct. 340 species have become extinct in Denmark since 1850. And then what is here is, yeah, they're like, they used to be wolves in Denmark. And, you know, they're gone. There's no wolves in Denmark anymore, as far as I know. And there were a variety of other species that just, there's nowhere for them to go. What are they going to do? Hide out in this little square of trees right here? Maybe. Certainly some animals do. But the animals that aren't quote unquote extinct yet, there may only be a handful of them in Denmark. And sometimes they use the word unknown. They don't know. But in terms of what is highly endangered in Denmark, it's very high. The, let's see. The portion of assessments in indicating bad conservation status is considerably high for some taxa, such as reptiles, reaching 100% and vascular plants at 81.8%. So, I mean, if nature took this all back, someday it could be supportive of biodiversity again, but, you know, at the moment. So, you know, when people talk about the human population and dismiss it or say it's racist to talk about the human population. The problem I have with that assessment, even though I kind of understand where they're coming from, because, you know, Denmark and the rest of the Western countries or developed countries, if you will, are consuming a lot. There's no doubt about that. But the, the truth is, I think there's, let's see, yeah, five, almost six million people live in Denmark. Well, they got to feed themselves. And so, well, yeah, this may not be full of humans. All of this area is used to feed those millions of humans. Or provide them with lumber or firewood or whatever this these little tree plantations are used for. Oh, this is a forest. Give me a break. So as far as I'm concerned, 98% of Denmark has been wiped out by civilization. The natural 98% of the natural world in Denmark. And the 2% is probably pretty devastated because it's fragmented and surrounded by civilization. So these goals of you know protecting 30% of the land, that's kind of a joke. Or 50 by 50. Check 50% of the land. I mean, we've seen what the protected areas look like here in Denmark. And this is the, the same reality elsewhere. Just because they say on paper that 30 or 50% of the land is protected doesn't mean squat. Hey, this is protected right here. We protected it. There's a campground here too. Look at the beautiful pictures. Look, people are canoeing. Uh, they're probably fishing, you know, camping, whatever, right? Having a picnic. Look at that. It's beautiful. But this is the reality. This is the reality. This and this. And so all those nice pictures you see on Instagram or elsewhere that show uh, these beautiful nature pictures. Remember, that could be right here 
And this is what could be surrounding it. Doesn't count. This isn't nature. This isn't hab habitat that supports biodiversity. And that's why we are in the sixth mass extinction, because we are doing this to the entire planet. It does not matter where you go on this place. You, you show me if I'm wrong. Every square inch of this place has been changed by humans. Dramatically changed. Altered. Fundamentally altered. So if you have any comment or question and you are on Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube, comment away, ask away. Otherwise, I believe we will wrap this up. Now, I'm just to let you know what's going to happen next. I, I, I just did this on a whim today, but I'm going to, um, I've had requests for New England and for uh, Tampa Bay, Florida, and for Guatemala. So if you'd like me to look closely with a magnifying glass or a satellite image at an area of the world where you are or that you're interested in, let me know and we will talk about it. I think there's a lot more that can be said about Denmark, about the land use that I didn't get into. But, I mean, this speaks for itself. You know, when we go to Brazil, there might be, we may need to quantify things more, but like the rapid decline. Because in Denmark, they can say, oh, yeah, we've grown our forests since 1800. By, you know, we've grown it from 1% or 3% or whatever to 15%. We're doing a fantastic job. We're rewilding. And to some degree, that's probably true. So that what that means is that this forest right here that we're looking at, which actually looks better than most of the other ones, you can see the scale isn't all that great. Look at these are houses right here. Um, it's not huge. But this all used to be farmland. And so you can kind of see some of these areas where the soil has been affected and there's different kinds of trees. But it, you know, it's generally a monocrop they still use these areas for um, for harvesting the trees for use for lumber and all that kind of stuff, and you know, it's not it's not the same, and it's not very big. You know, it's just not very big. Whatever it is that's there. I don't know. Is Greenland part of Denmark? That might be the most wild place in Denmark, uh, if that even counts. Yeah, that's camping right there. That's an aerial shot. That's kind of nice. That shows you from an aerial standpoint what this looks like. Little patches of trees. I mean, I'm sure it's nice to go th you know, for a hike there. But uh, again, that's what we have to distinguish between is a place that's a nice place to go on a hike versus what we're talking about. That's an ecosystem uh, that's complex, that has biodiversity, that is actually healthy. All right, so uh, I have my brother Gavin. He says that uh, there used to be no trees, and the black bear population was completely destroyed on the East Coast. Now there's trees everywhere, and black bears no longer endangered species. Yes, that is true. In fact, I would say that the United States, I mean, it's a vast land area, and there is potential, especially up here. I would say if I'm going to look at uh, New England closer in the future, but just to like a sneak peek here, I mean, New England has some areas that are pretty large. We have the Appalachian Trail, which is still, you know, there's a lot of mountains here. That helps because, you know, you can't really, it's harder to develop mountainous areas. Although, look at this, every square inch in between. Uh, but these mountain ranges are hard to develop or have farms on. And so, yeah, there is a vast 
amount more forest in the United States than, and then, and then of course Canada. Just to give you an idea, Canada is just covered with with forest. There's a lot more forest in Canada than anywhere else in the world, from what I understand. That's all pretty untouched stuff out there. So it's not all gone. <laughs> but if you go down to like Georgia, where I think there's less, there has been less um, impetus to save forests like you, you see in, uh, um, in New England. So that will be an interesting compare and contrast. You know, you have where places have sought to preserve places for forests, things like that, there is some differences. So if you look at Georgia, I mean, it is, well, there's more churches than there is uh, <laughs> trees, you know what I mean? Uh, or, or intact forests anyways. There certainly is some areas that you, you'll be able to find, but even like, look at this. This is, this is a forest in Georgia that looks pretty decent compared to the rest of the surrounding landscape. And even it is clearly uh, plantation trees. This looks pretty good. And this might be old growth or at least older growth. And that's the thing you have to realize, like it, it, when you talk about old growth forests, there is, I think um, maybe 10% of the old growth forests that used to exist in the United States are still here. see here. There's Atlanta. Chattahoochee Oconee National Forest. Yeah, okay. Up here, I mean, that's a, that's a decent land area to see. And it's mountainous. So this is probably Appalachia. Um, again, it, that's where you're going to see more stuff in the United States is in the mountains. But even there, let's take a look here. There's, there's definitely maybe some roads. There's a golf course. Or maybe, maybe not. <laughs> maybe it's just a farm. Uh, yeah, you could get lost in one of these forests. Let's take a look here. Yeah. In fact, I've done some posts about people getting lost in forests, and this is definitely one of the areas where it's happened. The Smoky Mountains. I've driven through this area. Not bad. Not bad. This whole Appalachian Smoky Mountains. Great Smoky Mountain National Park. It's pretty good. Let's zoom out and see kind of the scale of that. I mean, that's a good portion of Tennessee and northern Georgia. And then going to West Virginia, there's a lot of mining. So there is some things that are hidden. Like you can see in West Virginia, it's a mining state. So there's a lot of uh, land cleared for the strip mining probably. I think that the one thing that to note though is that so the black bears recovered and not endangered in the East Coast, but I think the mountain lions have uh, not done pretty well there. But any, as you can see, as we come out of the national park and come into these other areas here, a lot of it's you know been developed. So anyway, we will come back to doing some other areas around the planet in future videos. And this one. The main thing is Denmark. And, you know, compared to, I mean, it's a good point, compared to some places in the United States, Europe is pretty bad. Europe is like, this is, this is what it looks like all over Europe. So. All right, well, I'm about to head out to work.
But I wanted to give this a shot and see how it would go. If you have any feedback for me, let me know. This is Justin McAfee with CollapseCurriculum.com, where we talk about survival survival skills and what's happening to the natural world, some eco-consciousness. And, um, and this is the first time we're doing this review of a, an area, see what civilization has done to wreck it, and we'll do more of these. So we'll see you next time. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and have a great rest of your day.